All right, time now to pick through some of the issues of the day and perhaps the week with our political panel joining us today. Liberal MP Jason Felinski, Jason's in Sydney, and Labor Senator Malandiri McCarthy is, as usual, in Darwin. Welcome back to both of Hello. you. Uh, I guess we're all hurting with uh, high fuel prices. Uh, you can tell us if you have any idea, Mal, what sort of prices are being recorded in your neck of the woods, but uh, that's a preamble. Well, yeah. Yeah, go, well, go on, and then Absolutely. I want to ask you well about Absolutely, well over sanctions. three dollars, uh, three dollars ten twenty, uh, in places like Ram and in uh, in Mid Arnhem Land. I've just come back from uh, West Arnhem Land, actually, Greg, and the prices are just phenomenally high. That is, that's so. ridiculously high. Uh, you'd be above two dollars in parts of Sydney, I assume, Jason. This is all leading to a discussion about further sanctions and and how we've got to this point. But uh, yeah, you you couldn't put a patch on those sort of prices up north. Uh, we might have a problem with your microphone, I think. Oh, I know, you're, you're away. You're back with us. So oh, far oh, sorry. Away. I, I was just... Well, that's a shame, because I was just saying Senator McCarthy wins this uh, contest. Uh, she has the highest yeah, okay. prices, definitely. All right, no, no rivalry there it's then. It's a contest that we don't want though. Can I just <laughs> throw imagine. that in, please? But, but you know, we really need those prices to go down, Jason. It, exactly, but isn't the prospect that uh, they just may not? I, I draw as evidence here the Prime Minister's suggestion today that if necessary, if China has to become somehow subject to consequences, maybe sanctions, as the US has threatened, then Australia would be up for this, uh, joining other Western nations if necessary. Jason, were that to occur, uh, no matter the policy justification for doing it, that would be economically uh, very harmful for Australians, wouldn't it? Well, um, Greg, I, th I think it's probably fair to say that most of the economic damage that China can do to us has played out over the last couple of years. Um, that's not to say that we should just test that proposition for the sake of it and the government would never do that. Um, but what we do want to do is to make sure that we do not have one of our key trading partners um, supplying arms to a country that is currently undertaking an unlawful and illegal invasion of another nation. Um, we can't let that stand, and I'm sure... I, I can't imagine that anyone disagrees with that proposition. No, but it would mark a, a significant escalation, not just for Australia, but for the world, wouldn't it? I mean, it could, in effect, trigger a type of trade war that pitches China against all of your major economies, uh, the US, Europe, Germany, Australia, Korea, Japan, the rest of it. Um, look, I, I think, um, Greg, this is, this is kind of a very interesting discussion because there is an argument to say that because we have treaded so lightly in the past, that we have allowed people to get... We have allowed some authoritarian states to get ahead of themselves and to take increasingly dangerous action and to threaten the world order based on law. That, indeed, um, if we could actually um, get in a time machine, there are probably some things that we would have done in Syria, in Crimea, in the South China Sea and other places to demonstrate that we will not allow unlawful behaviour to continue at an international level and not allow... Um, bad actors um, to get um, to get ahead of themselves and to get emboldened by the moves they've made. Mm. So I don't think that we should repeat the mistakes of the past. Um, and indeed, in trying to avoid costs in the present, we only store up much higher costs in the future. Well, Malandir McCarthy, I think your party is is broadly on the same page. Penny Wong has said as much today after a meeting with China's new ambassador to Canberra. But do you agree with Jason that, in fact, you're already seeing it in the Northern Territory, that these forms of actions against authoritarian states are never cost-free? Uh, everyday Australians, motorists that we've been discussing at least, everyday Australians would pay in some way for it. Well, you're right, Greg. We are certainly seeing it here in the Northern Territory. Ramanginning is uh, one of our communities that's experiencing perhaps the highest cost so far. We certainly don't want anyone to go any higher than they are or for them to go any higher. Uh, they're, they're a very remote community. Uh, I understand that there are costs, but what we're not seeing here is that uh, people's uh, take-home pay isn't increasing either, Greg. Mm. So there has to be some kind of balance here. And we know that... Uh, if this continues, as it looks like it will, uh, there must be something else that is there in the intervening time 
to support uh, Australians, but in particular those Australians in regional and remote areas of the country. Okay, so we had the idea run up the flagpole earlier this week, Mal, of possible excise cuts to fuel. I'm not sure it's still fluttering at the top of that flagpole as we speak today, but would you, as a Northern Territory Senator, support cost of living um, relief whether it be on fuel excise that's targeted to particular regions, I guess the question is what is it that governments could do, meaningfully do, to alleviate yeah. that? Sure, Greg. Look, I know <clears throat> excuse me, that, that has been uh, debated and I have been asked on a, a, about that question on the Country Hour here. Uh, what I would like to see, of course, is that we have to have some kind of uh, support uh, for people in regional and remote Australia in particular where these prices are going high. Whether that's uh, fuel excise is not for me to say until we see what comes out of uh, the budget in the next uh, fortnight or so and see what the government is proposing. Uh, obviously the Prime Minister has hinted at that happening. But I'd also be mindful too, Greg, that we've got issues like uh, food, uh, transportation, you know, getting transport up here. You only saw last month how our roads were cut and we couldn't get uh, transportation up from South Australia and Victoria. Yep. And we know that those uh, transport uh, hubs are really important with our food supplies. So, so I'm looking at that as well, that once you have fuel rises, you're going to see rises in other goods and services. Yeah, which might be hard to administer, Jason Felinski, if we started talking about regionally specific cost of living packages. I don't know how you, you do that in law, but what's your starting position about cost of living in the budget? Uh, should it include fuel excise? If not, what, what should it include? Oh, look, I think um, Senator McCarthy has made a number of really good points there. Um, the first I would start is with a need for us to try and start um, stimulating productivity growth in the Australian economy, which is the sort of precondition that you have for real wage increases. That takes um, time, though. That, that, These pinch that, points yeah, are right here, right now. Greg, you stole the words. You stole the words right out of my mouth, almost literally. Um, that that is a sort of medium-term solution. Uh, a short-term solution is um, tax relief. Um, now, I can't comment on budget speculation, but um, that is one way to deliver these things. Senator McCarthy's other point, which is just a great one, which is that we keep rebuilding roads that wash away in the next storm or the next natural um, climatic event. And what we want to do is make sure that ad our adaptation to the, to the changing climate um, is better so that we are not every time that we do have a natural disaster that or extreme weather events we're not washing away infrastructure and that um, by the way has a massive impact on inflation because if every time after every natural disaster or, or extreme weather event you're rebuilding a lot of your infrastructure you're taking a lot of productivity um, sorry productive capacity out of the economy yeah. which creates supply constraints which then results in high levels of all right. Well, hopefully uh, the Treasurer might be listening to some of those suggestions and in your own way shaping the budget uh, just under a fortnight from now. Can we turn the corner, Malandiri McCarthy, to something that I know uh, you will have a lot of thoughts about because it happened on your patch, the uh, ever-present issue of uh, justice, law and order and policing in the Northern Territory, obviously in the context of the Zachary Rolfe verdict last week. This call that remote communities should not have police with guns in them, is it viable to do law and order work, justice work there with non-lethal weapons? It's been a really difficult time up here, Greg, and no doubt will continue to be so for, for some months uh, as uh, the families of Yundamu prepare for the next stage, which is the coronial investigation, uh, which will take place later in the year. And I do, if I can, for this moment, just re reach out and again, uh, you know, say to the families of Yundamu, stay strong. Uh, it is deeply uh, disappointing for you uh, what's occurred. But I know that, uh, you know, certainly for the family uh, of uh, Mr Rolf, I know they feel uh, very pleased uh, that he's got an opportunity to make something of his life and learn from this experience. Uh, what I would encourage here, Greg, is that uh, the people of Yundamu know uh, what they're talking about and the families know what they're talking about that there has to be a coming together here and if they're asking uh, for particular things like uh, not having the guns on police officers as they walk around Yundamu 
uh, you know, have them stored in the police station, have them nearby, but don't have them on their on their personnel as they're walking around to a sports game mm. or to the arts centre or to uh, just a check on community. I think that's a fair ask. Uh, clearly, I'm in the federal parliament, and this is a territory issue. What I would urge uh, territory authorities to do is to just really try, uh, in all goodness, to work together. Yeah, it does sound like there might be a maybe a path there, Jason. I know this isn't probably something you focused heavily on uh, because it's so geographically far away, but a negotiable pathway towards uh, some sort of compromise here. Uh, look, Craig, um, I, can I join Senator McCarthy in, in everything she's just said? Um, our criminal justice system has a woeful record when it comes to um, Indigenous, our First Nations people. Um, we need to find a better way. We need to um, have outcomes with better results. It will, I, I, I hate to say this, I really genuinely do, but it will rely, um, and a lot of that will rest on the shoulders of people like Senator McCarthy, who are on the ground, who are talking to people, who understand the issues far better than someone from the northern beaches of Sydney. Yeah. So I, all I can do is offer support to Senator McCarthy and the things that she needs to do um, and the people of the Northern Territory need to do. and. You know, we need to get better outcomes when it comes to these matters. All right, and can we just uh, wrap with uh, touching on something to do with workplace culture? I think we might have even discussed this earlier in the year, but there are these reports, I know they're contested, about uh, Kimberly Kitching oh. and difficulties that she may have had with Labor colleagues. Uh, first of all, we'll go to you, Mal. Um, do you join those who say uh, this should be discussed publicly or that there's a time to do it uh, later, uh, later next week perhaps? Was it a problem that was debilitating to Labor? Greg, I'm a Yanua woman from the Gulf of Carpentaria and we are known as Liata Wiriata, which means our spiritual origins come from the sea country. And death is really significant, you know. Sorry business is very sacred. I extend my deepest uh, heartfelt condolences to Andrew and the family and my dear colleague. Um, this is a terribly difficult time for us uh, in the Labor Party. Uh, it is not the time, not the time at all, to disgrace it uh, in the way that is occurring in media reports. Mm -hmm. It is not the time. Uh, this is the time for family to celebrate uh, the incredible achievements of my colleague and uh, I would just urge Australians to recognise that this is the time to remember her in the right way. Uh, point taken. Jason, I'm not trying to encourage politicisation of this argument, but uh, what's, what's your position on whether this is something that should be explored? What, what appears to be an intra-ALP uh, discussion? Well, I mean, workplace events um, need to be discussed, Greg, if we are to get better we need to talk about these things. This may not be the appropriate time. Um, Kimberly Kitching was an extraordinary member of the Senate and the Parliament. Uh, we need more people of her courage, of her insight and her intellect. I hope the stories that we're reading today are not true and I have no further comment other than that. No, fair enough. And, and Greg, can yep. I just add to that as well? I, I work with every single one of uh, the, my Labor senators. Um, and it's been an absolute pleasure to have worked with Senator Kitching. And it is absolutely awesome to work beside Senator Wong, Senator Keneally and Senator Katie Gallagher. And I would uh, vehemently uh, oppose uh, allegations that have been made today against them and just call on all Australians to just step back, step down and let us bury our comrade. Yeah, point Please. taken. Um, I'm sure there's always two sides to every story too and sadly we'll never get to hear one of them uh, even if there is something to this. Mel McCarthy and Jason Felinski on that uh, sombre note, uh, thanks for joining Afternoon Briefing. We'll have you both back again before too long. Yes, some uh, weighty matters to uh, get through.